In this video, I will show you an AC circuit example using source transformation theorem. Before going to the circuit solution, let me have a quick review of source transformation theorem in case of AC circuit. So what is source transformation theorem? An alternating voltage source in series with an impedance is convertible to a current source in parallel with an impedance of same value and vice versa see source transformation theorem states that if i have an alternating voltage source in series with an impedance let's say i will indicate that alternating voltage source with vs an alternating voltage source vs in series with an impedance of let's say zs i can convert this voltage source in series with this impedance zs to a current source let's say i will indicate that current source with i s in parallel with an impedance of same value as the impedance in parallel with the current source will have the same value as the series impedance with this voltage source so i will indicate this impedance with z s so source transformation theorem is this i can convert this voltage source to current source or as this is vice versa or if I have a current source in parallel with an impedance Z S, I can convert that current source to a voltage source. Okay, so this is known as source transformation theorem. Now let me describe this using these two figures. Let's say I have this A and B terminals. Within this A and B terminals, I have this alternating voltage source V S. This is connected in series with this impedance Z S. Source transformation theorem states that. I can convert this voltage source to a current source I s but in that case I have to put the impedance Z s in parallel with the current source or if I have a current source I s in parallel with impedance Z s I can replace this current source with a voltage source by placing the impedance in series with that voltage source this is the source transformation theorem so how do we convert the voltage source to a current source or a current source to a voltage source if i know the value of voltage source and the impedance our current source is will have a value of v s divided by z s if i simply divide the voltage source value with the series impedance value i will get the phasor value of current source and i will place z s in parallel with that current source or if i know the value of i s i can easily convert this to a voltage source just by multiplying this with the impedance z s this will be equal to v s and this is the source transformation theorem if i have a voltage source v s in series with an impedance z s if i divide that voltage source v s with the impedance z s i will get the value of current source i s and i will place impedance z s in parallel with that current source or if i have a current source i s if i multiply that with the parallel impedance z s i will get the value of voltage source v s in that case i will place the impedance z s in series with the voltage source okay so this is our circuit in this circuit we have to find i naught we have to find i naught in this circuit using the concept of source transformation theorem see here I notice the current that is flowing through this branch. The branch contains the 1 ohm resistor and capacitive reactance of minus J2. Whenever we have to apply source transformation theorem in any circuit. And we have to calculate current or voltage in any specific branch. We will leave that branch of the circuit intact. That means when I will simplify the circuit, I will not work with this portion of the circuit and i will work with this portion of the circuit at the end of my simplification okay so i will keep this portion of the circuit 
intact or untouched. Thereby, I will start my simplification from the left portion of the circuit. Okay, look here. We have this current source of 12 phase angle 90 degree. And look here, we have this branch. This branch contains a resistor of 4 ohm and a capacitive reactance of minus J3. Let's say I am indicating this branch impedance with Z1. So what will be Z1? Z1 will be 4 minus J3. This is the branch impedance of this branch. Okay. If I convert it into polar form, I will get 5. Phase angle will be minus 36.87 degree. Okay. So I have an impedance Z1 in parallel with a current source. Let's say I. 1. This indicates that I can easily convert this current source to a voltage source and I will place this impedance Z1 in series with that voltage source. So what will be the value of that voltage source? Let's say I denote that voltage with Vs. Vs equal to ISRS. Here IS is I1. Impedance is Z1. Let's say I indicate this voltage source with Vs1. This will be equal to 12 phase angle 90 degree into Z1 5 phase angle minus 36.87 degree this will be equal to 60 phase angle will be 53.13 degree so if I indicate this terminal as terminal A and this terminal as terminal B within A and B terminals I will replace this current source I1 with a voltage source whose value will be 10 phase angle 53.13 degree in series with an impedance of Z1 or 4 minus J3. So if this was our A terminal and this was our B terminal, see within A and B terminals, I have replaced the current source I1 in parallel with impedance Z1 with a voltage source of Vs in series with that impedance Z1. So this will be our first simplification of the circuit using source transformation theorem. Now look between this terminal and this terminal. Here you will see from this terminal to this terminal. If I denote this with C and this is our B terminal you will see between this terminal to this terminal I have two resistors 4 ohm and this 6 ohm and a capacitive reactance minus J3 and this inductive reactance of J1 therefore from this point to C point let's say I denote that impedance with Z2 you will see from this point to this point C point our total impedance through this path will be 4 minus J3 plus 2 plus J1 this will be equal to 6 minus J2 and if I convert it into polar form I will get 6.33 phase angle will be minus 18.43 degree this indicates that from this point to this point our total impedance will be 6 minus j2 this 6 will indicate the real part of z2 and this minus j2 will indicate the imaginary part as the imaginary part is negative so minus j2 will indicate the capacitive reactance from this point to this point so if I replace these four components with a resistor of 6 ohm and a capacitive reactance of minus J2 that will be our second simplification of the original circuit this will be our new circuit and this will be our second simplification of the original circuit This was our C terminal and this was our B terminal. Now look here. 
between C and P terminals. We have this voltage source Vs1 and between this terminal to this terminal we have an impedance Z2 which is equal to 6 minus J2. J I can say that Vs1 is in series with Z2. Therefore, I can convert Vs1 voltage source to a current source. Let's say I will denote that current source with I2. So, how do we calculate I2? I2 will be equal to Vs1 divided by Z2. Vs1 will be equal to 60 with phase angle 53.13 degree and Z2 equal to 6 minus J2 equal to 6.33 phase angle will be minus 18.43 degree 6.33 phase angle minus 18.43 degree so this will give us the value of current source and that will be equal to 9.48 phase angle will be 71.56 degree ampere and we will place Z2 impedance in parallel with the current source and that will give us our third simplification of this circuit okay so this is our current source I2 and we have placed the impedance Z2 in parallel with the current source see 6 minus J2 now see this was our C terminal this was our B terminal within with respect to C and B terminals you will see this J5 and the impedance J2 let's say I denote this impedance with J3 J2 is equal to 6 minus J2 and J3 will be equal to J5 you will see this J2 and J3 are in parallel when two impedances are connected in parallel I can easily replace them with a single impedance with their equivalent impedance therefore let's say I denote the equivalent impedance of Z2 and Z3 with Z4 Z4 will indicate the equivalent impedance of Z2 and Z3 as they are connected in parallel when two impedances are connected in parallel we calculate their equivalent impedance by using this formula Z2 into Z3 plus divided by Z2 plus Z3 here Z2 is equal to 6 minus J2 into Z3 is J5 divided by 6 minus J2 plus J5 this will give us a value of 3.33 plus j 3.33 ohm this indicates that if i replace z2 and z3 with impedance z4 it will have a resistive part 3.33 as the imaginary part is also positive so imaginary part will be inductive reactance so i will replace these two with a single resistance of 3.33 ohm and inductive reactance of 3.j 3.33 ohm and that will give us the see this was our third simplification and that will give us the fourth simplification of the original circuit z4 was 3.33 plus j 3.33 3, 3. we can easily express that in the form of R plus JXL so this will be inductive reactance this will be resistance so this will be our Z4 and we have the current whose value is equal to 9.48 where phase angle is equal to 71.56 
degree okay now see this will be our fourth simplification of the original circuit see we have to calculate the current through this branch which contains one ohm resistor and the capacitive reactance of minus j2 let's say i denote that impedance with zl zl will be equal to 1 minus j2 now see we have this current source i2 and we have two parallel branches one contains impedance z4 another contains zl so if i have to calculate i not current we will use current divider rule if i use current divider rule in two parallel branches you know that i not will be equal to if i want to calculate the current through this branch i will take the impedance of opposite branch so here i will take z4 okay z4 divided by the sum of this branch impedance and this branch impedance z4 plus zl and multiply this fraction with the total source current i2 so this will be equal to i0 equal to z4 divided by z4 plus zl into i2 here z4 is equal to 3.33 plus j 3.33 divided by 3.33 plus j 3.33 plus 1 minus j 2 and we will multiply this with 9.48 phase angle will be 71.56 so this will be equal to 9.86 higher phase angle will be 99.50 degree and this will be our final answer this this is the current that is flowing through the impedance of zl this is our current i naught okay that's it thank you